Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, I tried to do this video earlier and I had all kinds of things going on. It was a, a rough morning, um, but since then I've grabbed myself a nice uh, cold brewed coffee and I pet my dog a few times to relax myself. Okay, so now I'm ready. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world today, as we all know. Um, so this uh, video today can uh, apply to preppers or uh, just the everyday person who's trying to stay ahead of inflation. We all know that's uh, uh, an ongoing issue these days. Um, and what it is, it's a solar powered freezer system. It is possible to run a chest freezer off of a solar system, which is relatively inexpensive and simple to build. And I'm going to show you the one that I have today and uh, hopefully you'll get some use out of it. Uh, I have a system set up. You may have seen it in the background here during some of my other videos. And uh, my intent was to design and build it to run one freezer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It happened to be the seven cubic foot that I have behind me. So as we go through this, keep that in mind because since then I've added two uh, smaller freezers, two five cubic foot, and um, I can't run them 24 seven with the capacity of the battery that I have now. Like I said, I designed it for uh, 24 seven operation of one freezer and then I added those and I'm in the process of actually upgrading that battery so that I can run them all 24 seven. So uh, keep that in mind as we go. This uh, system is designed and built for one chest freezer, but uh, once you get it uh, built and set up, it should be set it and forget it. So although I only designed the system to run one freezer on it, in a short term emergency up to about 10 hours, I can run all three freezers and a dorm fridge. So if the power goes out for four or five hours, what I do is I switch them all off of the AC outlet um, from my house, plug them all in to the inverter output. And like I said, I can run them all for up to nine to 10 hours. So that takes care of short-term emergencies. So it's very useful for that. As well as if there's a long-term outage, I can still utilize it. And I, all I have to do is come up with a power plan. So what I do is I take two freezers, plug them in for four hours, and then at the end of four hours, I take the other freezer and the dorm fridge and I plug them in for four hours. So I just alternate two freezers for four hours each. And they're insulated so well, the chest freezers, that the temperature doesn't come up you know, above freezing. It still stays, everything inside stays frozen. I just do four hours at a time. So um, additionally, what this provides me, it's another system around my house that I can use in emergency situations to boil water with a kettle. It does work for that. I can cook with a rice cooker or a crock pot. I can do that. So there uh, are almost endless opportunities when you have a system like this. Let's get techy. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very basic solar system to set up. It's not difficult by any means. Let's we'll start right at the beginning. We have my two 315 watt solar panels. They come down and they feed into my garage via this switch. They come through the wall, they feed the switch, and this allows me to split the power coming in from those panels either to the, the two output, which goes over to my solar freezer system, or it allows me to switch over to number one, which goes down and I use to top off or feed my 3,360 watt portable solar generator. And if both are pretty close to being topped off or just halfway there, I put it on one, two, and it splits the feed so I can charge both at the same time. So let's get on to the solar freezer system. We get into the basics of it. You can see the leads come down from the solar panels, the switch, and they feed into my MPPT charge controller. This is a 40 amp charge controller, which allows charging the battery up to 40 amps and it uh, feeds down into these distribution posts. I have one lead off the distribution post going up to a 12 volt fuse block 
which I use to power uh, different items that are 12 volts, obviously. Uh, as it is right now, I have it hooked up to a simple fan that I'll turn down or turn on once the heat gets uh, a little too much in the garage. And I do have a 12 volt thermostat that I'm gonna automate that with. I put in a temperature range that hits 90 degrees in my garage. It'll automatically turn that fan on. And then if it goes down to say 80 or 75, I can set it the range, whatever I want. It'll automatically turn that off. I do have that over on my workbench. I just haven't hooked it in yet. The second leads come down and they charge my battery. This is a 120 amp hour, 12 volt battery that I built myself. You don't have to build it yourself. There are retail ones on the market and I will put them down in the links below if you're not comfortable building this yourself. The capacity of this is 120 amp hours at 12 volts, so it offers me 1,440 watt hours to run my appliances. Um, this is the BMS that controls the battery. It makes sure that it does not overcharge, it does not over discharge to damage the battery, and it keeps within a uh, safe temperature range with the uh, temperature probe on it. So that's basically the brains of the battery. As I mentioned, if you don't want to build this yourself or are not comfortable doing that, there are retail options with a similar capacity and similar functions available, and I will put the links to them below as well in case you wanted to go that route. That leads over to here, and what I have hooked in here, the battery BMS has Wi-Fi capability, which allows me to read the parameters, the battery status, uh, real time via an app on my phone. And I'll put a, a screen cap up here for you to, to take a look. It's a nice little feature. Not necessary if the BMS is working properly because it will control itself, control the battery on its own. If the BMS happens to fail, I do have a backup in the system and that's a battery monitor. So if I don't have my phone or the BMS breaks or something like that, I can do a quick status check just by pressing the button there. And then from the battery, I go up here to my inverter. This happens to be a 1500 watt pure sign inverter, 3000 watt peak. I would recommend only using in a system this size using a 1000 or a 1200 watt inverter. The reason I use this is because I had it around and I did put in two safety systems to ensure that this does not pull too much amperage and melt the wires, start a fire, that type of thing. One of those is the breaker and one is the BMS. I have the BMS setting set to stop flow from the battery if it goes over 80 amps. Um, I have 30 years experience in the electrical industry so um, I'm pretty confident in my capabilities but as I mentioned if you're designing this and building it for the first time make sure that you use a 1000 or a 1200 watt inverter and I would use pure sign because you're dealing with compressors that will the pure sign will lengthen the life of your freezer compressors everything in this system as far as wiring and breakers are properly sized for the current that's going to be flowing through them so it is not a safety hazard so um, make sure that if you do design and build this, that you use the proper size wires and breakers or fuses. You can use fuses if you'd like. Another killer feature of this solar freezer system that is not directly related to the solar aspect, but is very important to the holistic nature of the system nonetheless, is the monitoring system that I have in the freezers. I'll show you real quick. You can see there is a battery operated puck. It's a magnetic puck, it just comes in and out. And um, this monitors the temperature and the humidity inside the freezer at all times. It's uh, made by Inkbird, and I have one of those pucks in each of my freezers. And what that allows for is real time monitoring and alarms if the freezer happens to fail or the power goes out. What it does is it sends an alarm to an app on my phone. 
And that lets me know if there's a problem and I need to send a family member or a friend over to check my freezers and make sure that I don't lose everything that I have inside them. Now they come, uh, if you buy the pucks themselves, they run on Bluetooth and they will transmit alarms and the status to your phone. But I found that the Bluetooth is relatively weak. So if you're going to have the freezer inside your house and you're gonna be around it all the time, not a bad idea it's it's a little layer of protection but the killer feature is the wi-fi gateway which is right here so how that works is all three pucks that i have they transmit all their data to this wi-fi gateway and this wi-fi gateway is actually connected to the wi-fi in my house and what that allows is me to real-time check on the temperature and the the health of my freezers or it will send alarms to me anywhere I am in the world as long as I have my cell phone and I have coverage. So if I happen to be on vacation in, I don't know, a dream location, Hawaii. Never been there, but would like to be someday. Um, so I'm in Hawaii, I'm on vacation, and all of a sudden the app on my phone alarms. It will actually push an alarm to me and tell me that the temperature in... This freezer, freezer two, for instance, is out of range. It's getting warm, so something's going wrong. Um, either the power's failed or the freezer itself has failed, and it will actually push an alarm to me so that I know that there is a problem with that freezer, and I, like I said, I can have somebody come and check it out for me and move my belongings out into another freezer or coolers or something or any way I want to fix it, but it allows me the opportunity to fix the problem before the contents of my freezer spoil and I lose a lot of money. So you might be asking yourself, is it worth it? Um, I can tell you that uh, for me, it has been worth it just for the peace of mind, knowing that if I do have a power outage or there's a, you know, an emergency event that um, I'll be able to save my, the contents of my freezers. That's really important to me because I have a lot invested in there. So this will give you probably seven to 10 years of maintenance-free um, freezer operation. Um, also, don't forget about the Inkbird with the uh, Wi-Fi because that is a game changer when you have uh, a lot invested inside your freezers. Uh, it's very important to know if you have a problem, when you have a problem, and uh, give you the opportunity to address that before Anything, the big investment inside your freezer thaws out, goes bad. Whew, I'm telling you, it's been a rough day. I almost forgot to tell you, if you're interested in building this, uh, designing and building something for yourself, then please go to my website. I'll put the address here, here, somewhere on here. It's uh, thetechieprepper.com. I will do a write-up on this that will include uh, some pictures uh, for your reference. You know, it's a lot easier to reference a still picture than a video. So I'll have a, uh, a few uh, detailed photos as well as a simple schematic to make things a little bit easier for you. That being said, please like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and most importantly, tell family, friends, anybody you think might be interested in this type of system or any of my videos. Uh, that helps me a lot and I'd appreciate it. And hopefully I'll have something cool to show you again in my next video. Thanks. Bye.